verse 13 to 17. Make a list and keep a record of your pray. And when God answer, you go back and thank Him. He have a lot of things for, ready to be thanks. In Him, you are trusting. Paul write to Ephesians. After you heard, to, after you heard the, the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit, or of a promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance. Please mark down all of this. I don't have a time to go in every detail, but this verse is powerful. How many of you this morning you could raise the hand and say, Hallelujah for my inheritance. Hallelujah for my inheritance. Amen. Hallelujah. Until the redemption of the purchased possession. To praise of His glory. Therefore, I also, after I heard of you, faith in the Lord Jesus. That means keep a record. He heard record. The faith in Jesus and your love for all the saints. You still with me? Now, this is the verse which we want to pause this morning. Do not cease to give thanks for you. Do not cease to give thanks for you. Make a mention of you in my pray. That we, that, let me, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. Woo! Hallelujah! May the Lord bless His word in our hearts. You may be seated. We have a huge responsibility in our shoulder. God did not call us just to carry on the title that we are a Christian. But God called us to make a difference and to impact the world. And especially of all, when controversy coming along, when things cannot go right in our life, and we give thanks to Him. That the world will see something that we not lament like everybody else, but we will praise the one that He gave His only begotten Son. I want you to know, church, God is a proud of you. If you not believe when you go home, look at the book of Job. Amen. Because God told the devil, Are you poor attention to my son, Job, my servant? How good it is. God is a proud of you. And a lot of time, God has to allow the challenge in our life. Because he wants you to get deeper in your faith, root yourself in the Word of God, and give him a praise. Come on, let's hear a good amen. amen. The church have a great ministry. We have to pray for the church. We have to pray for the need of the church. We got to get involved to serve the church. And we have to be friends with every family and every uh, members of the church because that's the will of God, that we need to honor each other. If we do that, we honor God. Paul was so proud of this church. The church of Ephesus and it was a perfect church. The church of Ephesus have a lot of problems when you go in the history. Even though the church was a pastor by John and then Timothy take over the ministry. But this church, remember that there was a conflict in the church. And the conflict that was between the Jew, the conflict that was between the Greeks, the conflict that was between the Gentile. Each one, they want to prevail with their own opinion, with their own feeling. I say the Tuesday night in the prayer meeting, the lot of time, the, the, uh, 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 doctrine is given for the good. Doctrine is, give, doctrine is given for our protection to identify God. Us, uh, let me correct. See, the people of Israel came out of the Egypt. They were no identity. What identified them was on the month of Sinai when God gave them the Ten Commandments. 
And they say that for these ten commandments rule in you, that meaning I am your king, I am your God, and I dwell in your midst. You give them identity. But what happened? A lot of time, those doctrines we could try to spread. We try to put our, our five cents in. We try to put our opinion in. And we want the people to agree with us. You know when my father got saved and we got saved, we were the first in the town that we challenged the yoke of the Catholic Church in those days. Amen. We were persecuted. We were not free. I remember my father being arrested a few times. Once I was with him, and we were in the police station. Thank God that they don't put us in jail. They hold us there. They give us some warning, but we walk out and we keep on doing what God put in our hearts to do. Amen. And many, my pastor, I got arrested a few times. They tried to bring him in the north, away from the family. But all of that, it was done in such a harmony and in such a perseverance that we, if you go in Italy, go in the history, and you see the Pentecostal church, it was the first church be recognized by the government and thank God for the US, United States of America. Because they sent the five, three lawyers. I remember, I was there. We tried to hear the radio, amen, the news every day. But when the freedom came, the churches started to split. We were so united. And then all of a sudden, everybody, they have a call of God. Not before when there was a price to pay, but now everybody have a call of God. Everybody want to be a prophet. Everybody want to be somebody. And what we did, it was done very wrong thing. The church is always struggling. It was, it is, and there will be. But remember that in the midst of the church, there will be those people that in the midst of Israel was called a remnant. There will be all the way the remnant that they have the mind of Christ. They try to focus for unity. They try to unite and they try to build. And bless you are if we do that together. Paul is a proud of this church. He not praised this church for the consequence or the conflict. He praised this church and he said, I heard so much about your faith. And I'm so glad because the verses say, I not cease to give a thanks for you. He not give a thanks for himself. And remember, Paul was in jail when he wrote this epistle. He was in Rome. He was in the jail. I visited. If you go to Rome, go visit. You go see now. It's a beautiful place. Sometime I was thinking, why I got to pay the water? I could go in the cave and stay there for a few nights. But not on the time of Paul. He meant, you know, have never privacy. There was always soldier on his side. All the way he was a tie with the chain. And amen. And Paul, amen, he gave a thanks. He worshiped the Lord. He praised God. Every soldier that was on his side, he came to know Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What a blessed testimony. The Caesar now, when he see that, he said, you know what? We change. I don't send any more soldier there. I send the soldier that they are related to me. And I'm so glad. Because Paul could write a letter on and he said, brothers and sisters, those of a Caesar house, <laughs> those soldiers of a Caesar house that they supposed to watch me, they say greeting unto you because they know Jesus. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. We have so much to give a thanks unto the Lord. Yeah. Make sure that you keep a track. Mark your request. He give a thanks. This word, this song, give a thanks with a grateful heart. You look at the song the theological way. You have a lot of wrong things in that song. 
There is a song that when I am down, he lift me up. There is a song you want to go through a trial, sadness and sorrow. There is a song that lift me up. Because when you give a thanks to God, God is a faithful, he's a true God. He fulfilled what he said. And there is no one who could stop. Hallelujah. You know, this word, give a thanks, it is written in the Bible 2,009 times. And every time you find, there is an hour away time when there was something special. It was time when the people were in sadness and sorrow, but they give a thanks to the Lord. Only 537 times, just in the New Testament, give a thanks. Give a thanks. Come on, church, all together, give a thanks. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember, church, peace. It is not the absence of a trouble. But peace, it is when you are in the presence of God. The meaning Jesus said, in this world, you will have a trouble. You will have a persecution. But remember, in me, you have a rest because I conquer the power of death. I conquer the power of the world. I conquer the devil. He could come as an angel of life, light. He could come as a lion. But he's a defeat already. Hallelujah. Jesus put him under his feet. And my joy and my, and my work and my focus it is. Give thanks with a great full heart. Why? Paul, he said, I give a thanks for you. I know, never cease to give a thanks. Paul, are you out of your mind? You shall pray for you. You shall pray that God will deliver you. You shall pray, but you know what? When you pray for others, when you give a thanks for the prosperity of others, you get blessed. And you get free of the things that make no sense a lot of time we fight for. Give a thanks. I never cease. Make a mention of you in my pray. For what, Paul? For the inheritance. For the inheritance. Come on again. We will see one more time together. For the inheritance. Matter of fact, one of our fathers, his name is Francesconi, he was the missionary to Brazil, the pioneer church, the first Pentecostal church that he had experienced in Chicago of the baptism and the Holy Spirit. And then God sent him to Brazil. And when he arrived there, amen, he said in his book, he said, we have an holy Inheritance, not just an inheritance, but it's a holy inheritance. You still say hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, in the book of, uh, of uh, Numbers, there is a beautiful story, church. When you go home, as I said, I don't have a time to, uh, I want to move on. I don't have a time to go in any detail. But when you go home, you found a beautiful story there. It's uh, maybe if we could put a, we could lock a truth, just a few thoughts together. Numbers chapter 27, from verse 1 said, Then the door of Zelopehad. <laughs> now, focus for a moment. Those doors, they were the door of a wacky father. Do you remember when Moses said, who will be on the side of the Lord the coming on my side? And who will not be on the side of the Lord while you go on the other side? Stay there. And what happened that this man, either maybe the microphone just happened to me in the beginning and it was on of a Moses, maybe then I heard clear, you know, I heard clear, but you know, went on the side of the Lord. He stay on the other side. You don't have no sons. You have a four door. 
the name of this daughter is mentioned here in the Bible, in the story. One of the daughter was uh, Mala, one of the daughter Noah, Hogla, Michael, and Tizha. Uh, this is a Jewish name. It's tough sometimes to pronounce. But one thing I want you to know, that those four daughters, they evaluate the inheritance of their father that they don't have no right to inherit. You still with me, church? They cannot. Because the Bible was, God said, the sons of, the male sons inherited the property, the inheritance of their father. And by the way, it is also God said, that each tribe, they got to marry among them because the inheritance of one tribe cannot go on the other tribe. Each one, they got to preserve the inheritance that God gave to them. Today, everything is going. We want to mingle with everything. We want to be accepted by the world. God, forgive us. And let, now he will have a day in mind, the church. You are called out of the world, out of Babylon. You are unique people. And God is a proud of you. And he want to be proud. Make him be proud of your life. You're still here. So what they did, they went before Moses and before the priest. And they said, I know that we cannot have the inheritance of our father. I'm so glad that they know. You know, I say that in the Bible there is a, over a thousand promises. I don't know all of them. But I know some that I chose. And I remind God those verse. Because he said, I will guide you. And I remind him to guide me every hour, every moment, every second. They said that he will lead me out of his eyes. He said that the word of God will be a lamp in our path. He illuminates us. Amen. Do not accept all of the voice that you hear, but only the voice of the true shepherd, and his name is Jesus. Whatever not fit in the word of God, stay away. Because it's men put out, and men fell, and all fell with the men. But what Jesus said and what God has said never fell. Heaven and earth have passed away, but not my word. The word of God has never passed. So they said, we want the inheritance of our father. Moses has to go before God because they challenged the law. They cha challenged the system. And God loves when we challenge his promise. That's right. God really love when we challenge his promise that we not give up. It takes 20 years, that's okay. I'm dreaming in jail. I dream in the Potiphar house. I dream whatever, but I will not give up. Because what I dream, it will be fulfilled. Yes, I go through sorrow. Yes, I go through the agony. But God will fulfill my dream. Because I don't dream my dream. I dream his dream. That's the difference. A lot of time we dream our dream. We set the things and then we say, God, now I need your favor here. And then we blame God. This is one of the things that I'm 68 years old. I never heard anybody to make a wrong choice and blame himself or blame the devil. I always blame God. Look out there. People always blame God. But God said, I have a good thoughts towards you. I have a good feeling towards you. I have a promise of a blessing upon you. And we blame him for everything. God deliver us, not the church, not the believers. They said we want the inheritance of our father. Why? Why you got to challenge God? Why? You, your father made a mistake. He was whacking. He not listen. He have a, by the way, he have a free funeral. They don't have to pay for his funeral. Because the, the earth open, swelling everybody in, and the earth closed. <laughs> there is no tomb, nothing. Those daughters were a blessing. Wake a father, and it cost them much. 
but they want what belong to the Father, the inheritance, because we are a part of the people of God. And the one before God, that God decided to Moses, give them the inheritance of their father. God rise today, the church, like, like Paul, and all of us that we think about this holy inheritance, that we could have a great report, that we could have a great testimony. Remember in the book of Revelation, we be overcome and we will be victorious only by two things. There is the word of your testimony and by the blood of the land. Don't ruin your testimony for foolish things. Don't ruin your testimony after some uh, a man idea. Don't ruin your testimony. You compromise your faith with something that God said, this is bad in my eyes. All on your integrity, because when you do, the end, you will be blessed. Yes, church, be grateful for the life in sickness or in health. Be grateful. Every morning when I open my eyes and I see through the window the, the, the another day, I am grateful sometimes. I don't feel to, to be grateful. Because when you arrive my age, you have a surprise every morning. One morning hurt here, another morning hurt here. Another morning you cannot move your hand. It's, uh, and again, I will remind, when we are young, we never think how rich we are when we get old. You remember what I say to you? When we get old, we have a silver in our head. We have a gold in our teeth. We have a sugar in our vein. Hallelujah. We have a stone in our kidney. We have a feet with the steel, and we appreciate how rich we are. We lament, oh God, I hurt to hear. Oh God, I hurt to hear. And God has said, Give a thanks that you see the light of another day. <laughs> give a thanks that you could give me praise in the land of the living. It's a guy. Get ready, you got to die. This is the man of God, the prophet Isaiah. As a guy said, okay, I know I'm very, very ill. He turned himself towards the wall, and he said, God, I don't want to die. <laughs> I want to praise your name in the land of the living. Hmm. God, Found Isaiah one more time. Isaiah, where are you going? Well, I go home. I delivered the message you told me. I went. I told the king, for your house a hoarder, because surely you die. Well, you got to go back. Why, God? Well, I changed my mind. God, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You cannot change your mind. You can't do that. No, no, I changed my mind. Go back and tell my servant, you want to praise my name in the land of the living? <laughs> you want to praise my name in the land of the living? Are you still with me, church? He want to praise my name in the land of the living. In other words, he will appreciate my life. Definitely, at the end, he did boo-boo. Probably he will regret. But God said, I give him 15 more years. Heritance. Church, say with me, heritance. Give thanks. Be grateful for the life in sickness and in health. Be grateful. Be grateful for the blessing that God gave to you and to others each day. Give thanks. Not be jealous. I wish that God would bless you with a million dollars. And then you give 10% to the church. I don't need no promise of faith. I will build a parking lot in gold when you give $100,000. I only need $3,500. God bless our church, church. You know, we got blessed to have another brand new freezer be given to us. I think we got to get the Friday. 
we receive a blessing from outside of the church that you cannot believe. Be a blessing. You are inside of the church. Be a blessing. Let the Holy Spirit bless you. Because it's much blessing being given that to receive. Amen. And when we give for the kingdom, God will bless us. Father, prosper. Don't be jealous. Give a thanks. I give a thanks for you, for your faith, for what you accomplish. I give a thanks to you, for you, for your everything. Lord, are you out of your mind? I pray for you. No. I'm so glad that this church have a good report. Yeah, there is a travail among them, but there is a good report outside of the church. Why? Because of their faith, that they are sealed with the Holy Spirit. They are protecting by the Holy Spirit, and they have an everything, and I'm so glad of their bless. Give a thanks. You're still with me. Worship team, get ready. I got to close. Be grateful for Jesus in your life and the hope of glory in you. Give thanks. You don't got to go on the cross. He went for you. And you don't have to struggle for this inheritance. Here is a special hope that is storage on you. If your name it is written in the book of life, you don't have to worry about it at all. Make sure that your name is written in the book of life. Don't transform yourself. You heard that story. This woman was in a hospital, very bad accident. And she was a candidate to die, only 28 years old. And she prayed, oh God, I mean, I'm too young. I don't want to die. Help me. And God hear her pray, answer her prayer, and say, I give you 40 more years. So she settled. And now before she be released from the hospital, so she have a manicure, she have a facelift, she changed the color of the ear, and she have a all a kind, and she was another woman. Walk outside the hospital, the first step. Boom, car pass, knock it down, and kill it standardly. So you under heaven. She arrived there and said, God, you told me. Yeah, he said, but I don't recognize you anymore. You transform yourself. <laughs> See, when God is transforming us, he knows what he works, and he still work on me. He only takes six days to create the moon, the star, the earth, but still work on me. But when he finish, I am the vessel that he planned me to be, not what I want. Hallelujah. You're still with me. How many times I say I close? Once. Okay. Seven times. So be patient. No, 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 no. So church, be grateful for your life. Be grateful for every day. Be grateful for the sickness. Be grateful for the good health. Be grateful. Whatever we have, be grateful. Give a thanks for others. And for their prosperity. Be grateful for his promise, possibility of life in abundance of life. You know, Revelation chapter uh, eight, 3, verse 8, to say like this I know your work. See, I have set before you. An open door. Say with me, an open door. And no one can shut it. I thought that you shout hallelujah. You have an open door of a blessing. No one could take away your blessing. For you have a little strength. I'm so glad I don't have much strength. But God always give strength for those that they are weak. Give thanks. Those that are weak, what are they going to say? I am strong. Those that they are poor, I am rich. Why? Because I have a holy inheritance. Give thanks for that. And ever keep my word. 
and have not denied my name. That's why you have an open door before you. Let me conclude. This is that said. Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. Now I took this out of uh, the translation, which is ETRV, not New King James. I like this translation. For me, my favorite is the New King James, because only you read the King James Bible, go to heaven. Keep that in mind. No, no, church. Those people, they say that, they don't know what they're talking about. If you read the Word of God, I approach you with any translation. Because I started when I came to this country with the King James, and I have a hard time to depart. Because I memorized a lot of verses with that. But in Exodus 20, verse 7, out of the translated ETRV, say like this. Say like this. You must not use the name of the Lord, your God. Make a, uh, uh, let me correct you. You must not use the name of the Lord, your God, to make an empty promise. If you do, if you do, the Lord will not let you go unpunished. So in other words, God has said, I give you promise. And those promises are yours that you got to work it out to inherit it. Sometimes you got to break the law of uh, something. You got to insist before me. Just like those four doors. They say, I know that we're not supposed to have this inheritance, but we not give up. If my father was a foolish, if my father in a lesson to Moses, we want his inheritance because we are a part of the family and the chosen people of God. And God has said, okay, give to them what belongs to the Father. Amen. God did not make the empty promise of church. When we use the name of God after foolish things, and we minimize the holiness, the authority, the minding of our God. What do we do? We play church. We play over scripture. We fight over nonsense without the realize that we make God to be mockery by other people. Because if we not stand for God, the people out there, see I say Friday night, the, the people of Israel Lock on their carnality and, and what they did, then I represent the God to be a peculiar and an example of people before the world. They have a war among themselves. Brother Raj, right? Say, what is it? Chapter 20, 21 of the judge. They fight among themselves. <laughs> God said, I set you to be an example. You are the light of the world, so they say to the church. So what God has said, he will fulfill. He said he will heal the sick. He still heal the sick. But if he chose to not heal you, stop complaining. Just to surrender your life to God. And let God do what he has to do with your life. Because he has a plan. And he is a God. He don't have to reveal the plan. I have to trust him with my life. I have things that I pray for me. But I'm not complaining. No, even my wife, I'm not complaining to her either. But I know that God is a faithful, He's a God of faithful and truth. And definitely whatever He say, He will fulfill. But we got to be faithful to Him. 32 years. Many of you are with me 40 years. You never see your pastor cry or lament. Or because of something else. You always am here to encourage you to say, God is a proud of you. Make him proud of your faith and of your life. And of your testimony. That what he said, he will fulfill. According of a Pastor Penella will. <laughs> according of any one of you will. 
So many times when we put God in the corner, we punch. Come on, you got to do it. And God is, yeah, punch. Keep on punch. Look at your life, how miserable you are. When I want to bless you, I have an open door before you. So don't play game with my name. Don't make a promise, the empty promise, because if you do that, I will punish you. Take that on the bank. Because God is a faithful and in truth. Let's stand. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Can you, will you have a song? Okay. I hope we sing that one. Uh, that's okay. Church, the altar is open. This morning, come. Whatever it is the need, just come and give a thanks to Him. Because when you give a thanks, God fulfills.